Hey there, and welcome back from spring break. Um, we are going to change things up here in this part of the course. Um, I'm going to start here today talking about the fire on the landscape. The main um, focus of the module this week is fire regimes and fire history reconstruction, but there's some other things I want to talk about first. And one of the things I want to do is uh, review where we are in the course and um, what we'll be doing from now to the end of the semester. So um, here's the outline for this module because it's going to be a review of the topics covered so far. Um, talking about fire behavior on the landscape. How variable is fire behavior um, based on a lot of things you've already learned. And then we're going to talk about fire regimes, their classification, and then fire history reconstruction and how those are, how that is related or used to determine fire regimes. Uh, so let's get started with this review of the course topics. So first I'm going to talk about fire in the Earth's history and then I want to emphasize that what we've been doing so far is talking about fire as a physical process. We've talked about combustion, about all the elements of the fire triangle and the elements of the fire behavior triangle. So I'm just going to review those quickly so you know what to focus on for the rest of the course. So basically we have this understanding that fire um, has been occurring on our earth for over 400 million years. And that is because of 400 million years ago, plants were established on earth. Plants began to grow on earth. And when that happened, plants are gonna provide both the fuel because the fuel and that glucose molecule are in the plant tissue. Plant tissues are made up of glucose. And also plants gave off oxygen through photosynthesis. So those are two elements we know that are needed for fire to occur. And that's why fire has been on our earth for 400 million years or so. So we also learned about fire as a physical process. And that is um, combustion. It's a chemical reaction. It's an oxidative chemical reaction that results in, a, in the release of heat, carbon dioxide and water. The inputs are basically oxygen and some fuel. And that's the plants again. They got the carbon, they got the sugars, they got the gases that are going to be given off in combustion. And then the outputs are going to be carbon dioxide, water, and heat. And remember, um, a lot of folks, uh, when they did their discussion questions, failed to mention that water is coming off because that pre-ignition, when that water is being released as water vapor, that's part of the combustion process. So um, the water vapor is released and those gases are given off and that's pyrolysis and then in ignition those gases are going to ignite. So just to refresh your brain before we get to the final. Now we go to the fire triangle. We, we spend a lot of time talking about fuel characteristics because our triangle of course requires fuel, oxygen, and heat. Those are the elements that are needed for fire to occur for that combustion process to happen, basically. Oxygen is gonna come from the air, and we've learned um, through talking about fire behavior, how it's enhanced by wind. And then that heat, of course, is we talked about ignition sources um, and how lightning works and how humans can cause fires as well. And then for the fire behavior triangle, again, this is all part of the, the physical process of fire. Um, it's going to, sh this shows the main factors that are going to influence um, ignition and fire intensity and rate of spread. Those are the fire behavior measurements that we've talked about um, for a number of weeks. So we know fuels, again, those fuel characteristics are going to be a key factor to fire behavior. And I think you guys have done a great job in explaining those um, in your discussions and in your questions and on the quizzes. Um, and then weather, of course, so precipitation and temperature, relative humidity and wind are the huge variables that are going to influence fire behavior. And again, I think all of you can think of examples of each of those and how that influences fire behavior. And then um, topography. Um, topography can have direct and indirect influences on fire behavior in that um, directly, if you have an increase in slope, that's gonna increase rates of spread. Um, your aspects, now this can be uh, somewhat of an indirect effect in that the aspect is gonna influence your fuel loads and your fuel moisture. And so that, of course, will influence those 
fuel characteristics are going to influence the fire behavior. And then another indirect effect is the rain shadow effect. Um, when you talk about the windward and leeward sides of mountain ranges, those are going to be larger scale than we're talking about in terms of the aspect, where on the windward side you have winds pulling up moist air and clouds forming and more precipitation falling on the windward side so that by the time winds come down on the leeward side um, there's going to be maybe less wind um, but less precipitation higher temperatures um, producing different fuel loads fuel loads and fuel moisture on both of those sides of the mountain ranges um, so just remember that. And finally, um, we did talk before the break about um, fuel models being used to predict surface fire behavior. They're only used um, for, for surface fire behavior. And um, many of you uh, seem to confuse these mathematical models that are used to predict rate of spread and flame length for the fuel models. The fuel models are an input to determine the rate of spread and flame length. They're the input to the mathematical models. Even though the fuel models are called fuel models in of themselves, they are not used in of themselves to predict fire behavior. Although the pictures of fuel models can sometimes be used and the descriptions, if you're out in the field and you look at a fuel uh, type, let's say you can match it to a fuel model and say, oh, this might be the surface area uh, surface area to volume ratio this might be the um, compactness and and so forth uh, so you can you can use them in that way to um, predict or the potential fire behavior and then we also talked about fire effects and those uh, fire effects that are most impacted by these physical aspects of fire this intensity flame length and rate of spread and those things are severity crown scorch height and mortality so where we're headed now is in the second part of the course, we're going to focus on fire as an ecological process. So first, we're going to look at the patterns of fires in ecosystems, and then we're going to look at the interaction of fire with the plants, the animals, the air, and the water. And these are going to be those fire effects that are going to um, show how plants and animals have adapted to fire. and um, and they're more an indirect impact from fire behavior uh, than those physical effects that we, we looked at just before the break. And I hope that all becomes clear as we go on this semester. So after uh, we do this ecological part of fire, we're going to focus on fire management, both fuels management and fire suppression tactics. So that's um, the introduction to this module. Hope you guys are doing well, and I'll see you soon.